Joining us tonight, Congressman Steve Israel of New York, Chairman of the DCCC. Great to have you with us, Steve. Appreciate your time. Thank you for having me on. Thank All you, All right, sir. so Boehner's talking election. He says jobs and health care. You feel on, like you're on solid ground there with your team? Oh, absolutely. You know, Speaker Boehner says, where are the jobs? Uh, the only jobs she's interested in are jobs in big oil companies. Uh, his caucus uh, continues to vote for $40 billion in subsidies to big oil companies, but says that we can't afford to uh, extend unemployment insurance, increase the uh, minimum wage, invest in infrastructure and manufacturing. This guy doesn't care about middle class jobs. He only cares about special interest jobs. Well, it, I, I visited with some lawmakers in Washington uh, day before yesterday, and there seems to be uh, some candidates, some folks that are talking about running for office. There seems to be a lack of confidence or a reluctance to talk about the Affordable Care Act in front of crowds. Now, I hope I'm just imagining this, but from what I heard, it's almost as if there, uh, some folks are having a hard time explaining just how good this is, and they quickly talk about, well, I'm not against the health care law, I'm for fixing it. Do the Democrats have a hard time explaining Obamacare, Affordable Care Act, the upside of it all and what it's doing? Well, they shouldn't because uh, the vast majority of the American people uh, do want to improve the Affordable Care Act. They do want to, uh, to make the Affordable Care Act better uh, and stronger. They do not want to repeal the Affordable Care Act. Uh, and so when Republicans go out there and say that they want to go back to the days where insurance companies can make fundamental health decisions for people based on their profit margin rather than what's best for the individual, uh, that is an indefensible strategy. When we go out there and say that uh, no longer will a woman with breast cancer be denied health insurance, no longer uh, will a child under the age of 26 be told he or she has no coverage, uh, no longer will you have lifetime caps uh, on, uh, on your health conditions. Uh, those are strong arguments, and so we have the high ground on those arguments, and so we're going to continue to talk about the importance of improving the Affordable Care Act and let Republicans defend uh, wanting to repeal the Affordable Care Act and go back to those, those days when uh, health insurance didn't work. In his press conference, uh, Speaker Boehner pointed to the dozens of job-related bills that he says the House has passed, and he says that uh, they've been bottled up by the Senate's Democratic leaders. Uh, a lot of blame game going on. Do you think that the Republicans have done anything of merit when it comes to jobs? Well, they're good at sound bites. Uh, they're good at partisan rhetoric. Uh, but the, let's not, not forget that this is a group of people who were willing to shut down the entire federal government just a few months ago uh, to pursue their right-wing orthodoxy, uh, extremism, and ideology. But jobs uh, bills. So but jobs. They haven't done it. Okay. They haven't done it. You know, their idea of a jobs bill is a $40 billion subsidy to, to big oil. That's yeah. not a jobs bill. That's a special interest bill. You want a jobs bill? Invest in manufacturing, infrastructure, education. Mm -hmm. That's what creates jobs, not subsidies to the special interests. Congressman, where are you right now if the election were held tonight? How many do you defend? How many do you have? Are you competitive in? What are the numbers right now as you see we it? Need we need 17 seats to take back the majority. Uh, it's too early for me to tell you whether it will be north or south of 17. Uh, there was a poll that came out today that showed that House Republicans, uh, they have managed to achieve a favorability rate of 13 uh, percent. And so this is a good environment that we're in, uh, and we're going to continue to focus on electing Democrats and returning a common-sense, problem-solving majority to the House of Representatives. Is it hard getting people to run on the Democratic ticket? You've had oh. a few folks step out and, and retire. George Miller has decided that he's going to, I mean, are you going to be able to get good people in those positions? Actually, these retirements have been a, uh, almost a catastrophic problem for Republicans. Nine uh, incumbent Republicans in competitive districts announced that they were retiring because the House Republican uh, Caucus put out a sign that said moderates are not welcome. Mm -hmm. So there are nine Republican seats that we will be able to compete in, uh, about two or three. Uh, competitive Democratic incumbents announced they were retiring, so we've got two or three. They've got nine, and their list is growing. We feel good about our landscape. And finally, quickly, uh, what, how much hope do you hold out for getting anything done in 2014, legislatively? Well, you know, if Republicans are willing to stand up for the middle class uh, instead of siding with uh, the special interests, we can get things done. Okay. Immigration, infrastructure, uh, education, those are three things that we need to get done. Uh, increase the minimum wage would be a fourth. We are ready, willing, and able to work with Republicans right. if they're ready, willing, and able to stop defending the special interests. All right, Congressman Steve Israel, thanks for Thank your time. You.